when designers have actually designed a part for a car, they can print it out and test it, which makes things um, a lot more cost effective and most importantly a lot quicker to do than uh, actually manufacturing the parts with the end use. So they can get the design absolutely right. So something like this mirror, they can print that out, test it, put it on a car, drive around with it, go, I oh, know we need that a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, whatever it is, and uh, really get the design right. We may see a 3D printed car one day, and we are close. Um, we've had examples of experimental cars using 3D printing with a lot of the assembly actually there. We're not there yet, but I don't think it's that far away. as normal in 3D printing world is that you can make something which is not possible in a traditional way. So very complex things which even the best chef cannot make it by hand or using other tools. That's one. Another thing is for example when we are making caviar as you can see here, it's a boring job and uh, the chef would like to do the creative process and not a boring uh, job. So now we can make very accurate the caviar and he can do another job in the kitchen. My guess is that in half a year a lot of restaurants will have this extra tool. It's only one of the tools. At this moment, it's too slow to offer it to a large amount of clients. But finally, there will be printers much faster and much easier to use. And then, of course, it will be used in, a, uh, in every restaurant. I thought it was quite interesting. Um, the taste is actually surprisingly good. So. I will try it again, <laughs> basically. It's affordability for exclusiveness. So we could go to China and get a container, but then we need uh, thousands of, uh, of uh, products to sell. And what we can do is we design just uh, a uh, lampshade. And if we sell one, we sell one. Because 3D printing, we know the cost for one print or 10 print or 1000 prints. And that helps with 3D printing. 